Hi everyone, Aiden here at the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Airlift 1000 Air Helper Springs on our 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4xe. Now before we get to checking out the airbags, we want to do some testing and see what the vehicle performs like before and after the installation. We've got just the stock suspension right now, no airbags installed, and we've got no weight in the hitch. So for that, we're just checking our stock ride height to see where we're sitting. Now from the ground to the top inside edge of the wheel well is going to be 37 and a half inches. We're going to load a cargo carrier in the hitch, load it up with some weight as much as we can, and see what kind of sag we're going to get. The main idea here is to see what the airbags do in terms of lifting the vehicle back up. So we'll see how much it drops down with the weight in there, and then after we'll install the airbags, see how it performs, and see if we can get back to that stock ride height with a load in the hitch. And now with the cargo carrier in the hitch loaded up with at least a couple hundred pounds of weight, we do have quite a bit of drop in the back of the Jeep here. Taking the same measurement from the same place, we're actually getting 35 and a half inches now. So we've got two inches of drop from all of that weight in the back. At this point, we're gonna strap it down, get a GoPro set up and take it around our test course and see how it feels and performs. So as we're driving around in the parking lot here, on the side to side portion of our test course here i am feeling a really good amount of body sway from the jeep just overall it feels like there's a load back there we definitely have a lot of weight in the hitch and you can feel it that side to side movement just feels slow to correct and overall it just drives a little bit differently now going over our bumps and our test course you definitely feel that up and down movement a lot more than you would obviously you're going to feel it no matter what but with all that extra weight back there, again, the Jeep is just slower to correct itself and those bumps feel more aggressive and it shakes throughout the whole Jeep more than I would maybe want it to. And now a little bit later, we've gone through the install process for the bags. We've got our load back in the hitch in the cargo carrier and we've got about 25 PSI in the bags. They can go up to 35. So I wanna take a measurement, that same point we did before and we're sitting right at 37 and a half inches, just like we were before without any load in there. So the airbags are helping to lift the back end up with the tongue weight there back to its normal ride height, giving us better control on the road. So let's see how it drives. And after driving around with the airbags installed, I've got to say they performed really well, even better than I was expecting. So on the bumps course, they did make a pretty big difference. I'd say before with nothing installed, whenever we would hit a bump, we'd get a lot of aftershock and you'd really feel it kind of trying to correct itself and being slow to correct. Over with the airbags though, we'd hit a bump, feel the bump and, and pretty much correct itself right back to normal almost immediately. So each bump was a lot more defined. It could make the ride feel a bit more stiff, but I actually liked it because again, once it corrected itself, it was back to normal really quick. I noticed a huge difference though in the side to side. For the body roll of the Jeep, there was essentially none and everything felt very responsive and very snappy for all of the turning. So any sort of evasive maneuvers you need to do on the road or just eliminating body roll are gonna work really well. Now, how does all that translate into actual real world use? For the side to side movement, that's really just overall ride quality, improving how everything feels whenever we're turning and just being less reactive to wind on the highway and reducing body roll. Now for the up and down portion, that could translate really well to any sort of trailers we're carrying or a heavy load in the hitch like we did today. But in addition to that, whenever you don't have airbags or any sort of extra support and we do have a heavy load in the back, it brings down the back end and it brings the front end up. It's gonna do some things like reduce our stopping power, aim our headlights up a little bit higher if we're driving around at night, which isn't really safe and is gonna shine our headlights into the mirrors of people in front of us so it's not safe for others on the road either and just overall reduces that ride quality so by adding some airbags to return us to a normal driving height that's going to just improve all of those overall so these airbags are going to provide a thousand pounds of support now that doesn't mean your vehicle can handle that much so be sure to check your weight ratings tongue ratings and make sure you're not overloading anything on the vehicle side of things but that's what the airbags themselves can support the air pressure can be adjusted in them to accommodate different loads. You do wanna keep a minimum of five PSI in the bags at all times, just so that they operate normally and have that sort of maintenance pressure in there. 
but in the case of our Jeep today, we can go up to 35 PSI if we need a lot more support and adjust anywhere in there to fit the load. That load can be adjusted or that PSI can be adjusted right here at the valve at the back end. We've chosen to route our two airbags together into one fitting at the very end. But if you wanted that independent control, it does come with all the pieces necessary to do that. Just for our Jeep today, there's really not that much reason to because chances are we're not going to have really offset loads. It's all mostly going to be on the hitch, very centered. You can see the red airbags in place right now. They're gonna be constructed of a polyurethane material and they just install inside our coil springs. You don't have to remove any components to get them installed. It's just a supplemental system to help support our OEM suspension components. And by providing that supplemental support to the OEM suspension, we are gonna be helping all of that last a lot longer because we're reducing the stress and strain that it feels whenever we're carrying heavy loads. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video here, the installation process is pretty straightforward. There's some things you do wanna check on just to make sure that you're installing these correctly and making sure that you don't overfill them because there is a variable PSI rating depending on your coil springs. We'll cover all of that in the install process, so go ahead and check out how we went through it now. Now, the first thing you wanna do for your installation is lift the vehicle up. You don't need a set of lifts like we're using today. Really, we just need some way to lift the back end of the vehicle up and allow our springs to stretch out a bit, giving us a little more room to work. When you're doing this, use some jack stands just for safety and make sure the wheels are chalked. You don't need to lift it up too high just to get us some extra room. Then we can take the included airline hose and it comes as one set. We've already got our one side installed up over here on the driver's side. It's a bit harder to see, so we did it off camera. And what you wanna do with your hose before you start off is actually cut it into two sections. So take the two ends together like this, stretch it out to find the middle halfway point. When it's all one big piece, you might need an extra set of hands if you don't have the wingspan for this. And once you found the halfway point, get a nice clean cut down the middle to separate it into two halves. Then we can get this a little bit pre-routed up under the spring. So up on the spring here, we can have the valve from the airbag going either up or down. For our application today, it's gonna to be easier to have it pointing up. So that's where our airline tube is going to be coming from. To make it a little bit easier for us, I'm gonna take it from the top, feed it down through, and if you need some needle nose pliers to help grab it from the other side, you can, or you can just get it by hand like that. And I'm just gonna pull it out from the top right here and just loosely set it in place right there for now. We can then take one of our spacer blocks, feed it through that section of airline tube that we just passed through on the middle hole right there, loosely setting that in place as well. That'll eventually live inside the spring. And then take one of our included hose clamps and get it pre-routed onto here, just giving it a bit of a squeeze, either by hand or with some pliers if you find yourself needing those. For the airbag, we wanna get the air out of it to make it easier to fit into the spring. So take the cap off the top that it comes shipped with and start to flatten it out. It's easiest to set this on the ground and try to just push all the air out of it that you can take the back side and fold it over flat on itself like this, hold it in place with your knee, and repeat that same flattening process on the front end, getting as much air out of there as we can, using your knee to hold down pressure, and when it's as empty as you can get it, put that cap back over the top to prevent air from getting back into this. Now we can take this up to the spring where we can slot it into place. Now for this part, it's going to be a little tricky to get it in there, but basically we want that valve end up for our application and just try to work it into the spring as best you can on all sides. When you're happy with how in there it is, it doesn't need to be perfect. Be careful because as soon as we take this off, it's gonna start filling up with air. So I'm gonna to try to keep it held down as best I can, take the cap off, put the end of the airline hose onto that fitting and get the clamp wrapped around the base there. So let's get started on that. And it could help to have an extra set of hands here just to help keep things held down, but it's not 
entirely necessary. Just get that pushed onto the fitting as far as you can. Then we can take our needle nose pliers and get that clamp seated around the base of the hose. Once you've got it set in place, you can get everything properly positioned, letting the bag fill up with air a bit more and getting that tube excess pulled through. Just like that. With both of the airbags loosely in place, you can start to route your airlines. Now you can choose to route these however you see fit, just generally trying to avoid any hot or moving parts, but we'll show you how we routed ours, so if you wanna follow that, you can. Starting on the driver's side, we routed it from the top, following this line of wires all the way back until it came to a point routing over the exhaust and the muffler over to right about here. We left some slack out because we're about to make our cut around there, but essentially this just fed above the heat shield down through a hole in the top of this back metal piece out through the bottom where it will eventually make its way to our fitting where we can fill it up or let air out. And then pretty much the same thing for the passenger side, keeping it high up and then following these existing factory wiring lines all the way up and over to that same point over here where it just ran up top this metal beam over to about the same point where the driver's side line went. We're gonna join these two ends together and feed it down through here to our fitting. For the time being, I'm gonna focus on the line for the driver's side. We're going to go to the section where we left some slack and you'll see that I made a mark right here on the side with some paint marker. Now, the reason I marked it right there is because once this is all pulled through nice and tight, that's not going to be going into this cross beam here. It'll be sitting just above the heat shield, so that's gonna be an ideal spot for the T. I'm gonna take a pair of cutters and just make a nice clean square cut on that piece right there for our joint. Now, whenever I do cut this, I'm not gonna let this end fall through right away because it's already routed through this cross beam and that will be the section that feeds down through. We're gonna get two of these clamps on either end of that cut line that we just did. And then take our T and push those lines onto it, much like we did at the airbags. Get those clamps over the attachment points. We can then repeat that whole process for the line on our passenger side. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of extra slack on here, but the main goal here is to just trim it as needed so that we don't have too much excess whenever we attach it to the T. Now at this point with the T made, we've got the matter of routing our fitting where we can actually fill things up. So what we're gonna do is actually utilize this bracket on our hitch that would be used for something like a four pole bracket. You can see we've already got wiring for that right over here, so it's not really needed, but we did take a four pole bracket and modify it a little bit. We'll utilize the same mounting holes on the top, but we cut it off here to make it look a little cleaner and drilled a hole to match the fitting that comes in our kit. So we're just gonna take our bracket and tighten it up into place. And with our bracket in place, we have our fitting to attach. Now for us, we're just using one fitting and we've got a nut partially threaded on along with a star washer. This will be on the back side here. And I'll show you why we have it partially threaded on in just a second whenever I put it up into place. But that will essentially feed through the back of our bracket that we just set up out to the front. And the reason here it's partially threaded in is so that it isn't sticking out super far. On the outside, I have a rubber washer that I'm going to attach first, follow that up with a flat washer, and then a nut to hold all of that in place. 
Now, a general rule of thumb, if you're going to have it partially threaded in on the backside like this, just make sure you have enough room to fully attach the cap whenever this is not in use. And then you can tighten those up once they're attached, just so it's not freely moving around. You don't need to crank down on it or anything, but just enough to keep it nice and snug. Now at this point, there's a lot of extra airline and really not a whole lot of distance left to go. So I'll make one final cut before we attach it. I am gonna leave myself a little bit of slack here just so I have some room to play with. Right about there. We'll attach another one of those clamps before we get this pushed into place, just like we have before. And then we can get this attached to the back side of our fitting. Now, one final thing I'm gonna do here You'll notice that on our hitch, we've got a little bit of a lip right here that we're bending around. So to just protect the airline right there, I'm going to wrap some wire loom around it just to act as a bit of a protector over that corner there and hopefully help it last a bit longer. Now at this point, we're moving our way back over to the driver's side airbag here. You can see my hand, hello. and the exhaust is gonna come pretty close to that airbag there. So we do need to provide a bit of a heat shield. Luckily the kit does come with one and includes two of these hose clamps that I'm gonna start by loosely attaching around the exhaust here in preparation for attaching the heat shield. So just do this twice in the same general area that you're gonna be working. We can fix it all and get a little bit more precise with it later. And as we tighten this down, remember to leave it loose. With those clamps loosely in place, we can get our heat shield and find out where we want to set it. We've got kind of a weird bend going on here, so I'm going to try to position it right about here, giving us the best protection on the closest point of our airbag from the exhaust right there. So I will take this back out and make some of the necessary bends to the tabs right here for attachment. I'm gonna take these middle tabs, bend them out about 90 degrees like that, and then back another 90 degrees like that. Our hose clamps will wrap around there for attachment. And you can see I did put a slight bend in the middle here to kind of match the curve of the exhaust. And we'll repeat that whole bending process for the bottom tab. At this point, we can just set it back up into place wherever we found we liked it best and get the hose clamps attached. And the last thing we need to do is take a measurement. You can see that we've removed the floor jack, so everything's just resting on the lifts at this point, and we can see where our springs are naturally sitting. Now, we wanna measure the distance between one spring and the next, and if it's anywhere at an inch or greater gap, then the maximum PSI we can put in those bags is gonna be 35 PSI. For us, it's well over an inch, so that's gonna be our max. If it were an inch or less, though, you'd be working with a max of 50 PSI. So just keep that in mind. Be sure to check your own Jeep just to make sure you can follow the same thing, and make sure you don't overfill the bags. With everything connected and hooked up, we're ready to test out the airbags and make sure that there's no leaks. It's recommended that you fill the bags up to 20 PSI for testing and then spray all the connection points down with soapy water to make sure that there's no bubbling and no leaks. Once you verify that there aren't any leaks in the system, you're done with the installation process. Overall, it's very straightforward. At this point, you do wanna deflate the bags down to at least five PSI for just driving around. You never wanna dip below that just for general maintenance on them. But if we have a load that we're about to put on, we can inflate it to whatever we need up to that 35 PSI limit that I mentioned earlier. And that'll do it for our look at an installation of the Airlift Air Helper Springs on our 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4xe. Thanks for watching.